Mr. President. The Senator from North Dakota. Mr. President, North Dakota is an energy powerhouse, and our lignite producers work around the clock to ensure homes and businesses in the Midwest have affordable and reliable access to power when it's needed most. But the PTC, the wind production tax credit, is creating artificially low prices in markets for power generation. Qualified wind projects are receiving up to two and a half cents per kilowatt hour from the taxpayer. These subsidies distort the market and are forcing out the critical coal-fired baseload generation we need to keep the lights on. Since Congress established a wind production tax credit in 1992, wind power has been able to transition from an emerging technology to a multi-billion dollar industry that is clearly commercially viable. That's why we worked on a bipartisan agreement in 2015 to phase down and sunset the wind tax credit at the end of 2019. We had an agreement to do the phase out and the wind industry agreed to it. I worked with Senator Thune and AWEA, the American Wind Energy Association and others to do it. And they agreed, we had an agreement. That's why we are opposed to extending the PTC and offer an amendment to strike it. We saw what happened in California over the summer and we can't afford to have blackouts and brownouts during the coldest of winter weather months. We, we instead must strengthen grid resiliency and reliability by keeping diverse sources of generation available at all times, including when the wind isn't blowing or the sun isn't shining. That means baseload. Instead of extending the production tax credit, we should be working on making technologies like carbon capture and sequestration commercially viable. The American Wind Energy Association states on its website that, quote, growth in the wind industry is expected to remain strong when the PTC is fully phased out. Why then are we considering another extension of this credit when the leading trade association expects to see strong growth for the wind industry without the credit? We need to bring back a level playing field for competition in our electricity markets and reverse the trend of taxpayers continuing to subsidize a mature, multi-billion dollar wind industry. I urge my colleagues to support this amendment and ensure that the wind production tax credit sunsets. And with that, I'd like to uh, ask for some words from my co-sponsor on the amendment, Senator Kramer. Mr. President. Senator from North Dakota. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I rise to join my colleague, Senator Hoven, in offering this amendment and urging our colleagues to support the amendment to strip the uh, wind production tax credit from this massive bill. Mr. President, I feel like I'm living in an episode of the Twilight Zone. And I wish I could say that I'm surprised, but I'm not. Because here we go again. Despite numerous requests and appeals and deals with the leader and the chairman of the Finance Committee to not jam this body with a 13th extension of the wind production tax credit, here we are with another one in front of us. Since the credit's inception in 1992, and for a lot of those years I was a utility regulator, it has always been promised that it would be temporary and would expire. Last year we got jammed at the last minute with another extension, and rightly, the people back home are really, really upset with us. And I didn't, it didn't sit very well with me either. That's why in April of this year, I led a letter to Leader McConnell with colleagues from West Virginia, Wyoming, and Georgia, saying it was time to finally level the playing field and get rid of this market-distorting atrocity. In July, I led another letter to Chairman Grassley with even more colleagues from West Virginia, Wyoming, Tennessee, Oklahoma, and Pennsylvania with the same message, let this credit expire. Yet here we are again. The requests have fallen on deaf ears and we've simply been given another bitter pill to swallow with the extension today. Some in this town have pointed to an extension in carbon sequestration credits like 45Q and 48A as if they were an equal trade. They're not. Despite years of pleading the Treasury Department, yes, this Treasury Department still has not finalized regulations. So an extension of 45Q is moot if there's no way to actually monetize the credit. 
Of equal importance, financial investors have said if renewable credits are extended, they will absorb whatever tax appetite exists because they're predictable. And those deals have been done many times. And just to reiterate, they can't even utilize 45Q because Treasury hasn't finished the regulations three years after Congress expanded the credit. More to the point, while there are some great proposed carbon sequestration projects planned in North Dakota, their benefit is targeted, while in contrast, hundreds of miners and local communities, communities they built are being hurt by the extension of the production tax credit. I strongly support carbon sequester projects, but to assume that the potential benefits of 45Q or 48A, 48A are equal to the unilateral harm of the wind credit is disingenuous at best. And I've heard from utilities who actually use the wind PTC, but they said they don't need it because the market is so awash with wind credits, they can't even monetize them. It's completely upside down. In fact, the PTC credits are actually taking money away from other clean energy projects like nuclear, clean coal, taking emissions-free energy right off the grid. Just a few days ago, Politico said this, the simplest option for tax extenders would, let, would be to let all 33 that, that uh, are scheduled to expire at the end of the year to be renewed. I have a simpler plan. Let them all expire. K Street wouldn't like it, but it'd be one less section in this giant package. So, Mr. President, one final point. In all my time in Congress, and that's been eight years now, the wind production tax credit has never been extended through regular order or an open discussion or even hearings. Despite our objections or promises from the wind industry that it should expire, in the 11th hour with the government shutdown looming, <clears throat> it gets dropped into the members' laps. That alone should be a red flag that the only time it has enough chance to pass is when it rides the coattails of our national defense and the government operations. It's shameful, Mr. President. And I support the amendment from Senator Hoven, and I urge my colleagues to support it as well. Let the wind PTC expire. I yield my time. Mr. President, I thank my colleague, Senator Kramer, and turn to my colleague, Senator Langford. Mr. President, I'll... The Senator from Oklahoma. Mr. President, I'll be brief. My staff did what many of us did today. We spent the day digging through a 5,600-page bill, trying to find out what's in it. We broke it up into hundreds of pages of chunks and separated among our staff and just started reading through it as quickly as we could, trying to be able to pull out the details. We found a lot of things that we really like. We found a few surprises as well. So help us, we found right in the middle of the document on tax policy, a zombie. The wind production tax credit. Something that we had heard had died. In fact, something that we had heard died two years ago. In fact, something that we had heard died six years ago when all of us agreed it should die. In fact, the plan was take it down a little bit each and every year until it finally got to zero. The problem was when it got to zero, some lobbyists helped somebody get it back in last year and it suddenly, after going to zero, reappeared. And then so help me, it reappeared again. So this temporary credit that distorts the market, that literally changes the prices and all of our energy, whether that be oil or gas or coal or solar or hydroelectric or nuclear, it gives a special perk to one and all of the rest of them get furious, but for whatever reason, this simple credit can't seem to go away. When we agree to something, we should probably stick to it. And we agreed years ago to phase this out. But yet this zombie keeps reappearing and walking the halls of the Senate. Our simple challenge is this. Let's put this zombie in the daylight. Let's have the real argument over it and determine is this distorting the energy market for everybody else, including all of our renewables? Is it something we need to keep? Now, I live in Oklahoma, and if you know our song, you know the wind comes sweeping down the plains. We have been called the Saudi Arabia of wind power. I promise you can't drive very far in Oklahoma without seeing a field of windmills. We've got lots of wind power, and we think it's a great energy source. But it's a mature energy source, and it does not need the wind production tax credit. So let's sunset it.
With that, I yield. Mr. President, I'd like to thank my uh, colleague, Senator Langford. Uh, also, we'd like to thank uh, Senator uh, Lamar Alexander, Senator Barrasso, others that support this legislation. And with that, I ask unanimous consent that our motion to concur with the amendment, which is at the desk, be agreed to, and that the motion to reconsider be considered made and laid upon the table. Is there objection? Reserving the right to object, Mr. President.